I wanted to start off the video by saying that YouTube is really weird, so please make sure that you do have my notifications on for the channel if you are subscribed, because YouTube will literally unsubscribe people when I upload videos. However, when I upload, if you have the notification on, which is the little bell icon on my channel page if you're on mobile or whatever the case is, if you have that set up to where you get notifications, you'll still get the notification even if you are unsubbed, so where you can notice it and resubscribe. So thank you for that. Let's go ahead and talk about the latest episode of Dragon Ball Super. There's not really much here. This was a, you know, slight Slice of life, gag, filler, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I hate the word filler with Dragon Ball Super because there's no source material, but, you know, the, if there ever was filler, it would be this. But it's cool. They got the Dr. Slump anniversary stuff going on, so this is stuff you just don't take seriously because this honestly felt more like a Dr. Slump episode than it did a Dragon Ball episode. Not really the way that it was, you know, handled, but the way that it was constructed, the setup. It seemed like they were more so in a Raleigh's universe despite them being, like, in West City. So it, it was it was fun, you know, because a Raleigh as a character is basically I liken her to Saitama I basically tweeted that I was like I liken a Raleigh to Saitama because she's a gag character for one and I just feel like in her, her own continuity her own universe she could beat anybody the same way Saitama could one punch freaking the Dai Shinkan in his own universe if they stepped over to the one punch man universe now I'm not saying that he could do that if Saitama came to Dragon Ball Z of course but like you know that's what it is with gag characters you just don't take them seriously they're a joke and I thought this episode was fun because Vegeta was like you know oh, I can't fight her. She's a gag character. Over here breaking the fourth wall. They broke the fourth wall hilariously whenever they saw the doctor. When um, Senbei saw the doctor, and he's like, wait, you died in the original manga. And they, they pulled out the actual manga volume. I was like, bro, really? <laughs> Ah uh, man, they kept breaking the fourth wall, and it was really, really cool to see that. Like, I, I was on some Darelove, Daredevil, uh, in Inception type stuff, so I thought that was really cool. Um, you know, and, and just seeing Arale again was awesome as well. She did look a little different; like her character design changed a tad bit. I, I don't really, I enjoy her a little more with the older, but that's more or less a product of this new animation style. I guess you could say the same about Dragon Ball too, if you prefer the older type of animation, the way that the characters are drawn, less glossy, and you know that type of thing with that type of shading and stuff. But uh, I digress. I did enjoy seeing Arale and, you know, all the characters from Dr. Slump. I do know a bit about it, but I haven't actually gone back and watched the anime because it's really hard to actually watch the anime. Um, I don't even think that there – I think there's one dub that's really hard to track down. So I, I would have to watch it in Japanese, which I'm totally okay with and I will do eventually. Uh, if you guys know me, I've been marking out on Twitter because everything Arale and Dokkan is ridiculous. All of her cards have been ridiculous. And I've loved Arale ever since she came to Dokkan like a month ago. Um, and, and the thing is, like, if you haven't had any sort of interaction with the manga for Dr. Slump or anything like that, you don't have any legitimate you know, care for these characters. So I do understand that. But you do have to appreciate where – you know, Toriyama started, if you do appreciate Dragon Ball, you have to acknowledge his earlier works, and, you know, Dr. Slump happened to be one of them. You can't hate on Dr. Slump and say that you love Dragon Ball, because Dragon Ball wouldn't be a thing without Dr. Slump. So, that, you know, that's pretty much how this all works out. So, I mean, there were people that were mad at the way Vegeta was treated, but you got to understand something. Vegeta is known to be a serious, angry character. Who could have done gags that way other than Vegeta? That's part of, like, the main cast. It wouldn't have been as funny if it was Goku going flying like that and blasting off like Team Rocket would say. It wouldn't have been funny. But if it's Vegeta, it's funny. You know what I'm saying? Because it's Vegeta. He's a character that's funny. He's supposed to be serious. He's like, oh, she's a gag character. I can't fight her normally with normal comic book type of... I was like, bro, really? He was oh, look, a UFO. He kicks her and her head comes off. Like, bro, stop this. Stop this nonsense. This freaking malarkey. It, you you know, like, it, it wasn't that big of a deal, but it was, it, the episode was just something that you just turn your brain off and enjoy. Noah Raleigh isn't as strong as, you know, Super Saiyan Blue Goku. No, she can't beam struggle him. No, she's not that powerful, but it's just, at, at least in the context of Dragon Ball, once again, she's said to be able to crack the earth, which she actually does all over the game in Dokkan, and she does a little bit here. So, she they actually showed her do it, but she didn't actually do it. It's weird. Um... I don't know. It's, it's, it's however you want to interpret that because they were still standing on the earth. It's not like there was freaking cataclysmic catastrophes and shit. So I don't know. There's not much really to say here. It was fun seeing, you know, the freaking number two generate things that they wanted. And I was like, bro, can I like desire two billion dollars? Would you just give it to me? Just not even that much, right? Like not even like two billion is a little amount of money, but I just need two billion specifically. Not a quintillion, not a, you know, a trillion, just two billion. Just give me that. And my kids and kids and kids and kids and kids. And, you know, after that, they're just generations will be straight 
as long as they don't have poor money management like me. But <laughs> I digress again. Um, you know, it was fun seeing Beerus show up uh, because he just pops in with the Hakai again. And I'm like, damn, Beerus. And, and funny thing about that, the one thing I can take away from this episode is that, and it's still a gag episode, but we specifically says, ghost or not, there is nothing that Beerus cannot destroy. Harkening back to Immortal Zamasu, that means that he probably, and I thought so anyway, it means he probably could have just destroyed Immortal Zamasu, which is really interesting because I also thought so anyway because Beerus didn't bat an eye when Zamasu spanned across the timelines when he went in the sky and stuff like that, and Beerus was like, oh, this must be Zamasu. He didn't give a fuck. You know, he didn't care. Like, he was like, I could, he, he, he was so nonchalant. It's to let you know that he could have probably messed him up, and they say over and over that he could have messed them up. So it is what it is. So I don't know, but... There's not much really else to talk about. It was seeing Arale. It was see, fun seeing her and Goku reconnect and, you know, harken back to Dragon Ball where they first had a crossover. And, you know, they spent some time in Penguin Village when General Blue was chasing them. And, you know, they were trying to get the Dragon Ball. So that was fun to see. You know, it is. We just need more crossovers from Dragon Ball. Not even just from Dr. Slump. But I want to see Aider. I want to see all those characters that Goku, you know, one shot. No, 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 not one shot, but had a one-time interaction with for like a few episodes or whatever, or an arc or something like that, you know? I think that'd be really cool. I mean, we saw Aider in the last arc, don't get me wrong, but that was future Aider for one, and he didn't really have any interaction, which is, eh, you know, I love interactions, that's the best part of Dragon Ball, but, or Dragon Ball Super at least, but anyways, I don't have anything else really to say, let me know your thoughts on the episode, once again, I hope you weren't too mad, if you are too mad, chill out, just let it go. It's not that serious. It's just a, something you were supposed to laugh at. That's it. The Dr. Slump anniversary, I don't know exact date of it. It's either really soon or it was really soon. If you play Dokkan uh, and you haven't summoned on the Arale banner, go ahead and do so. I've said so over and over. All those Arale cards are really, really powerful. That's it for me, though. I hope you enjoyed today's video nonetheless. I'll catch you guys later. Until then, peace.